we are continuing our series at the feet of Jesus. And today we're going to talk about the mother of Jesus. I think it's going to be a very special time together uh, as we look at the different things that the mother of Jesus must have experienced. Uh, before we do that, let's pray. We need God's help today. Heavenly Father, we're thankful. Thankful for the time, uh, the freedom to come with a Bible open in front of us. I thank you for the truths that are here. I thank you for uh, Jesus and his life. Oh, he's amazing. And as we look at his life, it impacts us so much. And I pray that right now you will help as we uh, study the mother of Jesus today. Help us to see some things here, maybe we have never seen before, that will help us to love you more. We ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, well, we're going to begin. We're going to start right off. Um, we have been studying different people who spent some time at the feet of Jesus. But I think the person who had the most time with Jesus, who? Uh, his mother, Mary. Mary. Uh, she was there really from the beginning, obviously, right up until the end of Jesus' physical, earthly life. And we're going we're gonna to study that today. So if you have your Bible, please open to Luke chapter 1. Luke, Luke chapter 1. And we're going to begin there and we're going to look at a number of things that happened with Jesus and his mother, Mary. Uh, so I'm excited. Uh, you know, really, our mother is so important in our lives. And uh, I thank God that I had a mother who loved Jesus so much. Now, my mother is with Jesus there in heaven. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for Jesus uh, dying, <clears throat> being buried, and rising again so my mother could touch heaven, and I can touch heaven as well. And so today we're going to look at the mother of Jesus. We're going to begin here in Luke chapter 1. The story begins with an angel coming down and meeting with the young virgin woman named Mary. And, and that angel, if you remember, he told her, you will give birth to the Son of God. Uh, and he explained. And, and she said to the angel, I have never known a man. How is it possible? The angel let her know the Holy Spirit of God would place inside her, the woman Mary, he would place inside of her the Son of God. It did not take a long time, and, and Mary knew she was pregnant. Uh, maybe she began to show her belly come out a little bit, but she knew physically herself she was now pregnant. And uh, the, the second person, we, the thing we see is she went to visit her, cous her cousin, Elizabeth. And uh, Elizabeth also was pregnant. She earlier had become pregnant with a boy inside of her that the angel also told what happened, and her, her baby's name, John the Baptist. Inside of her is John the Baptist, and she is, she is closer to giving birth, and she meets with Mary, and inside of her, John the Baptist jumps up and down inside his mother, and she feels and she knows. She lets Mary know you have the Messiah inside of you. Mary, maybe she was trying to be secret about it. Uh, she Already Joseph knew because the angel told him too. They had been engaged, now they're married. And Joseph accepts that Mary has Jesus inside of her. But now Elizabeth, her cousin, knows. And that really affirms to Mary, I really do have the Messiah inside of me. Um, and so I have to, time is so short, so I'm going to have to go quickly, all right? 
the next thing we see is, is uh, Jesus is born in Bethlehem. And there with Joseph and Mary in, the, uh, in a cave there, Jesus is born and he is laid in the manger. Uh, and Mary looks at that baby and Joseph, he looks at that baby and both of them know this is God's son, Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. That's what the angel already had told them. So Jesus is at the feet of Mary as her baby boy here. Uh, a sh short time after that, uh, the shepherds come and they tell Mary what happened that the sky just exploded with angels and shouts and glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, good will to men. They had heard that. They had seen it. And they tell Mary and Joseph. And when, when Mary hears those things, the Bible says this in Luke chapter 2, verse 19. The Bible says that Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. I like that. What does it mean? We don't use uh, the word ponder much, but that's the idea. Uh, the word ponder is the idea that it means to compare one thing with another to compare one thing with another. You understand? So if I see something, I say, oh, I, I see this. It looks, it looks similar to this, and I compare these two. What was Mary comparing? Well, she was comparing the news from the angel. You will give, you will give birth to the Son of God. Now she hears the testimony of the shepherds who saw the angels in heaven telling them that a uh, a Savior had been born for them, and Mary pondered, she compared those two things in her heart. She thought about it, mm. went over and over in her mind. Uh, Joseph and, and Mary, oh, by the way, remember a little bit later, the wise men come also, and Mary hears again another testimony. Not only the shepherds, but the wise men come and they tell them, we know this is the Messiah. We have seen a star in the east. They saw it and they came. And Mary would think and think and think about those things. Now we have to go fast forward because the Bible does that. In the same chapter of Luke chapter 2, we find that Mary and Joseph and Jesus had gone to uh, Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. They had gone to Jerusalem to celebrate there. And while they were there, uh, the, the celebration was finished and the group was going back to Nazareth. But Mary noticed, where's Jesus? She asked her husband, Joseph, where is Jesus? Joseph says, I thought you had. They forgot, you know, remember, we've already talked about that story. They forgot Jesus. Jesus is now 12. And uh, they left him in Jerusalem. They go back and they found Jesus with the, edu the highly educated men of his time. He was asking questions of them. He was giving answers, communicating back and forth with these men. And Mary came and really like a mother, she scolded Jesus just a little bit. Did you not know you made your father and me very, very, very nervous? Why would you do that? And Jesus answered his mother and he said, how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about, I must be thinking about and doing my father's business. Notice the capital F, my father's business, his heavenly father, not Joseph, his earthly father here. No, his heavenly father. He said, I must be doing his business. I must be uh, learning and learning and learning new, th new things and, and teaching these men. 
I must. I want you to notice a verse, just a few verses below. That's verse 49. I want you to drop down and see verse 51. In verse 51, it says, I want you to notice the words very carefully. His, Jesus' mother, kept all these things, all these sayings in her heart. Do you remember before when the shepherds came and it said, and Mary pondered, pondered, she compared in her heart the things that she saw and she had heard before. Now it says she kept all these sayings in her heart. And that idea uh, of kept is the idea of remembering, remembering, memorizing something. Mary wanted to remember that Jesus was here on the earth. Why? Not to please her and her husband, but really to please our Heavenly Father. Jesus was here on the business of God. He was doing God's work here on the earth. And Mary thought about that. She kept it. She memorized it. She wanted to remember that. Well, we go a little further. Now we're going to change from Luke to the book of John. In John chapter 2, there's something, something that happens in John chapter 2. Jesus, his mother, and Jesus' disciples are invited to a wedding in Cana. And they go to the, to the wedding. Maybe it was a friend of theirs or family member. We don't know. But they were invited to the wedding. And they went and they were enjoying themselves. And by the way, it was different than our weddings here. Here it's one hour maybe the wedding service and then we eat and then we all go home that same day. It wasn't that way here. They would eat and, and enjoy fellowship for a few days. And what happened, while they were there, uh, the wine was gone. The person who was married was embarrassed because the wine was gone. But Mary turned to Jesus and she said, you need to help, the wine is gone. And Jesus said to her, it's not my place or time right now. But you know what happened. Jesus told the servant, oh, by the way, Mary told the servants, she said, whatever he, Jesus, tells you to do, do it. Do it. And so Jesus looked at the servants. He said, get the wine, the uh, pots where the wine goes and fill them with water. The servants thought, water? Who wants water? We need some wine. But they, they obeyed. They filled with water the pots for the wine. And you know what happened? A miracle, the first recorded miracle of Jesus, he changed that water and it became delicious wine there. Wow. Jesus did that because his mother encouraged him that way. So all through the life of Jesus, Mary had the opportunity to watch. Uh, we don't read a lot about Mary in the ministry of Jesus. Just a few times when uh, Mary showed up and his brothers and sisters showed up at a meeting and wanted to see Jesus. But I promise you one thing. Mary was like most mothers today. They follow the activities of their children. My wife, really, uh, she followed what our children are doing still today. She knows what's happening in their lives every day. Why? She loves them. She's interested in them. And Mary would have been the same with Jesus Christ. Remember that Jesus began his earthly ministry here. What age? How old? Right, age 30. He was 30 when he began. And for about three years, Jesus served, ministered here on the earth. For three years, I'm sure, Mary watched what was happening. She knew what was happening in his life. And, and, and we don't read a whole lot about Mary until we come. Turn to uh, John chapter 19. 
John chapter 19. That's where we're going to park for the rest of our time today. In John chapter 19, we find it's sad. The story has changed from a wedding celebration now. We're talking about Jesus Christ before Pilate. He is judged, falsely accused, and judged. And it is decided that Jesus will be crucified. Horrible. Horrible. Before that, he was whipped. They spit on him. They beat him. And then they crucified Jesus. It's a sad, horrible thing. They drive the nails in his hands and his feet. And there he is naked before the people who are there. It's a shameful thing. But Jesus is crucified. Guess who is there at the cross? Who? Well, Jesus is there. Mother too. Mary is there. She knew enough about what was happening with Jesus to know that he had been crucified. And she, as a mother, she did not want to go, but she must go. She did not want to see what was there, but she must be there for the support of her son. She loved her son. She needed to be there to help him if any way she could. Her mother's heart drove her to there, to that place. And there she stood. Six hours, Jesus was on the cross. Six hours, Jesus there suffering horrible physical pain. While Jesus was there on the cross, he spoke seven times. Short, seven short statements. The first was, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That showed the pain, not physical pain at that. Well, of course it was physical pain. He's crucified there. But more deeper was a spiritual pain. Why? Because for the first time, In the history of eternity, God turned his face from Jesus, his son. And the anguish of the heart of Jesus, why, why forsaken me? As Mary would have heard that cry, remember the word pondered, compared? Mary would would have to compare. The angel told me I would give birth to the Messiah. Why? Because he, Jesus, would save his people from their sins. And there he was. Jesus said seven statements. I want you to focus on one statement today. And it's short. It's here in John chapter 19. In verses 26 and 27, the end of verse 26, Jesus from the cross looks down and he sees his mother and he says, woman, behold thy son. And he's directing, he's directing her eyes to John. This is in the book that John wrote here. And he says to his mother, look at your son, John. It was not her physical son, but now he would accept responsibility. And then Jesus said to his disciple, to John, behold thy mother. What Jesus was saying is simply this. Mother, look here. This man, John, he's going to take care of you. John, you take care of my mother. You understand the oldest son is responsible for caring for his mother if the father is gone. We don't read about Joseph in the Bible at all from uh, Luke chapter 2 on. So probably Joseph has died. That means responsibility for Mary, who Jesus is responsible. But he now takes the responsibility and he puts it on John here. It's a tender time. When I think about this, they're just short verses, you understand. 
Um, but it says, it says a lot about the character of Jesus Christ. He, even at the worst time of his life, physically, spiritually, he's separated from God, he's suffering the pain of the crucifixion, he's still thinking about other people. And, and we see that when, when he says this, I want you to think about his mother there. Let's go all the way back. She heard the announcement from the angel. You will, virgin, yes, you will have a baby. The Holy Spirit will put in you. He will be the Messiah. She, she remembers. Now she's looking at her son here on the cross. Her heart is just broken. But she hears the compassion of her son Jesus as he takes care of her going forward after he dies. I was thinking about it today as I was reviewing this message. Perhaps this in John chapter 19 here at the cross is the first time Mary really believed that her son Jesus would die. Maybe it's the first time. Oh, she'd heard the angel from before his birth, told that would happen, but she's a mother. She, she can't believe, believe that that will happen, but here she stands and she hears the words of her son. She knows what's happening. He's passing responsibility on to John. Maybe for the first time, Mary accepts my son, Jesus will die. That's a deep thought. But even at his death, his heart of compassion for his mother impresses me. It's important for us to love our family. It's important for us to be faithful to the end to our family. And uh, Mary, really, she was a good woman. But the truth, Mary needed Jesus to die here. Why? Because herself, she is a sinner. She needs a Savior too. <clears throat> I want you to see that Mary is the same as you and I. Every person watching today, me teaching you today, all of us need a savior. All of us are here today at the feet of Jesus on the cross. And we need Jesus to die. Why? Because all of us are sinners. If you have never received Jesus Christ yourself, first, you must admit, I am a sinner. I've done wrong things. Can I tell you, Jesus himself was not a sinner. He was not a sinner, but he accepted our sin and died in our place there on the cross. Because we, if we pay ourselves, we die and we go to hell. But Jesus Christ accepted punishment, persecution for our sin. But you and I first, we have to admit, I am a sinner. I need Jesus Christ. Second, it's important for us to understand that Jesus' death here was a substitute for our sin. Jesus took on himself the sin of the whole world and paid the debt for sin. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. And Jesus Christ took on himself the, the penalty, the payment, what we deserve for our sin, the cost for our sin, Jesus paid and he paid off. The last thing that's most important it's not enough to admit your sin. It's not enough to understand Jesus is the substitute for our sin. 
The third thing and most important, you must and I must accept Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as our payment. Here's what the Bible says. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's a gift. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is a gift. God bought for you forgiveness for sins and entrance into heaven, but it is a gift. And like any other gift, if you want it for yourself, you must receive it for yourself. I, I have bought gifts for people before. I, I bought them, I wrapped it, I put it, and I'm waiting for them, and they never came to receive. And that gift is paid, it's paid off, it's free. I, I've paid for it for, for other, per, other person, but they never came and took it for themselves. Whose gift is it? It remains my gift. I want them to take it, but they never took it. You today, you must admit you're a sinner. You must understand Jesus' death was for you. But third, you must accept, depend on, trust Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection to pay for your sin. Will you do it right now? You say, well, Jim Bryson, how do I do it? I would love to help you. Are you ready? You can pray right there, right now. You can pray for yourself and you can receive that gift. Uh, it's not yours until you receive it. Jesus, God already purchased for you, paid it, finished, but you must receive it yourself. Will you do it today? Pray with me. Now, don't just say words. You need to mean it in the depth of your heart. Say, Jesus, I understand I am a sinner. I understand you, Jesus, you replaced for me. You took my sin there on the cross. You accepted my punishment. And today, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried. But I believe Jesus rose on that first day of the week for me. He conquered my sin, conquered a death. He, he conquered the devil for me. I trust Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, period. Nothing else, nothing less for me. I will accept that gift as mine. If you prayed with me today, that's exciting news. I hope you'll let me know. Let me know I prayed with you. If you'll do that, I want to send you some things that will help you. If you right now, you need to write down uh, an internet address, www.silentword.org slash saved. If you'll do that, there will be a, a form that pops up. You put in your name, your name, your email, and we will send you some things that help you to know. What do you do next? If you prayed with me today, please let me know. I will be so excited about it. I want to rejoice with the angels of heaven. Let's pray and we're going to close. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for Jesus' love for his mother, his mother's love for her son. Thank you that Mary today can be in heaven because Jesus, her son, died for her sins. Help us be faithful to you. Help us to understand when we have received your gift, now we have responsibility to go and tell other people what we have learned. I pray that today some watching here today will have received Jesus today. And I pray that you will help them to know you have saved their soul for eternity. Finished. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, next week we are going to be studying the soldier who was at the feet of Jesus when he breathed his last breath. Don't miss it. I will see you next week.